Welcome to Indie Resources video on JavaScript and Ajax. Um, this is Halls of Valhalla. Basically, I've had a lot of requests for doing um, Ajax and using JavaScript to make the games a little more than what PHP can provide. You know, kind of some real-time stuff, being able to um, change the screen without actually having to up refresh the screen every time. Um, it is a little more advanced than the PHP uh, type coding. Uh, it does of course produce better effects but it also is a little more weight on the server at times but you can really make some neat stuff so what I've done is I've went in and made a game and I called it Project Battle it's basically a, a setup of how Ajax can work to make kind of a almost a real-time game um, I'm gonna give it to you guys free and then teach you guys how I, I built it and then you guys can just go from there and build whatever you want um, I'm just using some basic borrowed graphics and just a really simple game you know I didn't make anything really pretty because you guys are gonna change it anyway the coding is what's important um, the first thing I want to do though, uh, indieresource.com, you just go to the forums, that's where you can have all your questions answered. You can um, you can go down here to the tutorial thing. If you guys have not been through any more of my, any of my tutorials and you don't know how to use PHP or HTML or even WAMP, because I use WAMP for my local server, then go through these browser MMO tutorials and there's also all kinds of other tutorials and, and there's user tutorials and we've got an excellent community so go there. But to, um, to kind of show you what I've done, Let's size this down and I'll show you. Um, I'm using sessions so I can't have two at once so I have Google the Chrome on one and then we have Mozilla for the other and basically you'll see right now this is the two different users they're logged in under two different people um, and this is you know basically on the web so let's say that we want to move west you'll notice that the guy moves west if you go over here it updates on the other screen I've got it set to, to, to three seconds for any update once you move, every time you move, it'll automatically an update. But if you're not doing anything, every three seconds it updates. Depending on the server you're using, you can actually change that. You can go up or down with that. You might even be able to get away with every one second. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it that far. But the same goes with this. If we move this guy south, you'll see him move. There, you'll see him move. And the three second tick is whenever it lands so if he moves on one second it's gonna be two seconds but if he moves on that third second then you're you know you're gonna see a pretty quick update but it doesn't matter you know however you move he's gonna you're gonna see him update on here um, the other thing you can do is you can actually lumber trees and you'll see here it says lumbering fail so we can kinda move over to this other tree the only thing I haven't set up is the actual you have to be close to a tree in order to, to lumber it just because that's something you guys can go through depending on your rules or however if you notice as I'm moving he's updating over here every third second um, so let's click here you'll see the lumbering failed again fail fail at least give me one there he is success if you notice I didn't refresh in any of this all this happened and it even updated the the wood over here all this happens through Ajax Ajax goes and hits the server um, it does all the queries, everything we need through another PHP page, which I'll show you guys. But there's no refreshing of the page. It's all done right here, right through JavaScript. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into the code a little bit. <clears throat> what you're going to see zipped up is basically this. Um, let me just go ahead and show you the database while we're here. If you notice, the database is really small. I wanted to make it as small as possible so because there's going to be a three second hit for every single player on there every three seconds there's going to be somebody hitting that so you want as less um, as less things going to the database the one thing I did do that I made sure to do was that all the updating that happens on your screen happens in one request instead of multiple requests I made it all pass over in one request so basically your database is just set up um, if you notice each thing has a tag and what I've done is as I went through here Let me expand this out so we can see it. Let me drop this page out. There's what this is is I've I dynamically make div tags all the way across this thing, just tons of little div tags. Now the the one thing about this is is since you are not actually refreshing, it's only doing this once. Now of course when you move maps or you leave and come back in, it's going to have to create all the div tags, but it's, it's really instant. It's, it's quite fast, and being that we're not refreshing, you're not going to see a whole lot, but there's just multiple, multiple div tags that are dynamically created, and, and I'll show you how I did that here in a minute, but let's go back to the database. So basically, as you can see here, we have that tree. It's located at 
the div 50 um, I'm put into where you can have different maps so this is I can I counted this is the woods let's say you want to go one over then this could be you know woods one woods two woods three and then eventually desert or whatever else so it's, you're not just stuck on this one map when you hit one edge of the screen you can figure out a way to go to the next map really all you gotta do is update the the players database um, the next thing is all the players are going to be located on the map wherever they're located so that's how it knows like that he's here and he's here and then the icon that they are their ID the ID is basically just kind of like a random ID just to make sure that if two people were in one place and they both had the same name like two trees that it knew the difference and then the value what I did on the value is I wanted to make it to where the the land grows and, and, and dies so right now it has a value 90 every time somebody lumbers the tree that drops by 30 and the value is based on how hard it is to lumber now I don't have this set up because it would have just I would have just ended up killing the trees right then I never would have got shown what I wanted to show you but I'll show you where I stop that and you can actually bring it back in but basically after a player the more the player lumbers a tree the harder it gets to lumber till eventually it just dies off and then we can make some crons to make it actually grow back or, or however you want to do but um, next we'll get into the coding and that'll be in the next video.